Hello, and welcome back to Grass Types, the show where you learn to identify plants and maybe some other cool things along the way. This time, we are going to attack a plant that's one of the first little rays of sunshine after winter, Marsh Marigold. Its scientific name is Caltha palustris. Caltha is derived from ancient Greek meaning cup or goblet, referring to the shape of the flowers. Palustris means that it loves marshes. The common name marigold comes from its use in medieval churches at Easter as a tribute to the Virgin Mary. Get it? Mary Gold? It also could refer to Queen Mary I. It goes by the common names of cowslip and kingcup. Be careful because there is another plant that goes by cowslip with a scientific name of Primula varus, which is actually in the Primrose or Primulaceae family. Caltha palustris belongs to the Ranunculaceae family, which is the buttercup family. It is not related to the true marigolds of the Asteraceae family. Buttercups are considered an ancient family with many of its members being around 100 million years ago. The members don't really follow any strict pattern regarding stamens, pistils, flowers, and sepals besides usually being independently attached instead of fused. This sometimes means the family is considered simpler compared to other plant families. Joseph Paton de Tournefort, a French botanist, was one of the first people to scientifically name this plant. He called it Populago in part one of his book Institutiones Re Herbariae in 1700. He also may have coined the term herbarium and was one of the people who was attempting to group plants into different genuses before Carl Linnaeus made it official. In 1737, Carl Linnaeus came around and described this plant again in his book Genera Plantarum. It officially became recognized under its current scientific name Caltha palustris when it was finally given its binomial name in Carl Linnaeus's 1753 book Species Plantarum. Marsh marigold is a native perennial plant that has a circumboreal habitat and where it grows across much of North America and Europe. In North America, it spans through Canada, the Midwest, and the East Coast with a few counties on the West Coast. According to the USDA plant database, it is endangered in Tennessee. It blooms early from April to May for about a month in shady wet areas with rich soil, typically swamps, wet ditches, springs, and woods, usually in clumps. It is an obligate wetland species, meaning it requires water. It doesn't like fertilizer too much and avoids brackish water. Marsh marigold has two to five bright yellow flowers, one to one and a half inches across at the end of stalks off branching stems and are usually above the leaves. The flower is so bright yellow you can see it clearly as you're driving down the highway. What look like petals are actually petal-like sepals. There are no real petals. Each flower has 5 to 25 carpels and 50 to 120 stamens. According to wildflower.org, the flowers do not bloom until 3 years after germination. The leaves are described as up to 4 inches wide, orbicular, chordate, with scalloped or crenate margins, but sometimes toothless, and palmate venation. They are mostly basal, are protected by a leaf sheath when young, and if the stem has leaves, they are alternate. The stems are hairless, hollow, and branching. Each of the carpels, the female reproductive organ on the plant, forms a type of capsule called a follicle, a dry fruit with only one compartment that contains the seeds. These follicles will dehiss or split open once they become more mature to release the seeds. Each flower can have up to 200 seeds. Sometimes the rain helps spread the seeds by bouncing them out of the follicle when it hits. If they land in the water, they float due to a spongy tissue in them. Caltha palustris has many 2 to 3 millimeter thick branching roots. It dies down around autumn and overwinters with the buds near the surface of the soil. Marsh marigold has several different varieties listed in the same species. Some of them are variety alba with white sepals, variety purpurea with purple sepals, both grow in the Himalayas, variety palustris that is yellow with smaller lobes around the leaves, and variety radicans. It is a complicated plant when it comes to defining species due to differences in genetics and pollen shape. I won't go into the details. There are two other species in North America listed under the same genus under the USDA plants database, white marsh marigold, Caltha leptocepala, and floating marsh marigold, Caltha natans. Both of these two species have white sepals instead of yellow. 
Caltha leptocephala has a much more western range than Caltha palustris. It only grows one or two flowers per plant and has smaller lobes on the leaves if it has lobes. Caltha natans is a smaller species that blooms in July with leaves one to two inches across that float on the water like a lily pad. It is actually endangered in Wisconsin and Minnesota. Other plants that look similar to it are violets, garlic mustard, and creeping charlie. Violets, viola species, have similar shaped and sized leaves, however they are generally not as thick, do not branch, and have a longer and thinner petiole. Violets typically grow on dry woodland floors unlike marsh marigolds, and the flowers look like, well, violet flowers that come in yellows, whites, and pinks to deep purple colors. Garlic mustard, Aliaria petiolate, looks somewhat similar to marsh marigold in its first year of growth. However, the leaves have a different texture, much less uniform and rounded margins, and grow in dry habitats. During their second year of growth, they shoot up to four feet tall with small white flowers. Creeping Charlie, Glechoma heteracea, has crenate leaves as marsh marigold does, however they are smaller. It grows on dry woodland floors, often in dense mats unlike marsh marigold. It has small purple flowers. Hoverflies, or surfeit flies, are one of its main pollinators, but there are a bunch of other insects that pollinate it too. There's a little moth in Western Europe that relies on marsh marigold in its life cycle called Micropteryx calfla that eats the pollen from the anthers and has the caterpillars feed on the plant. The early spring greens, in other words, the young plants, can be eaten in moderation if cooked. If not careful when selecting and preparing this plant, you could have some issues. As with all plants in the buttercup family, it secretes protoanemonin, a toxin produced when the plant is wounded. This can cause itchiness, rashes, and blistering when touched, or convulsions, burning of the throat, or vomiting when consumed. In Act 2, Scene 3 of one of William Shakespeare's plays called Cymbeline, there is a short song about dawn called an obad, where Marsh Marigold is mentioned in the lines, and winking merry buds begin to open their golden eyes. Here it is being performed professionally. Oh wait, ah, no, Tom Hiddleston is barging in. That was unexpected. Darn that trickster. Anyway, that's it for Marsh Marigold on today's episode of Grass Types. Thanks for watching, and be sure to join us again in the next ID battle.